Hi, I'm Millie Gillen. I'm the Global Head of Client Experience at Standard Chartered. I hope everyone is staying healthy and safe. We are witnessing the world change around us. Experience economy is not new, nor is it going away. It's only evolving. How might we accelerate our growth in the experience economy? How might we leverage data to drive customer experience? Welcome personalization. You might say this is not new to the world. Well, in the speed with, in which technology evolves and how data is both created and utilized, personalization is new, especially with millennials and the older Gen Z. My team and I conducted research earlier this year on what is personalization. We started off by trying to figure out the definition. We found out there isn't one single definition. There's multiple. It's unique to every individual. Now, what we also did was try to understand who are the top brands across industries for personalization. Surprisingly, none were in banking, financial services, or insurance. And then we conducted in-depth interviews with baby boomers, Gen Xers, millennials, and older Gen Zs. Now specifically for the millennials and the older Gen Zs, what we found were channels. Are we approaching them in the right channels? Our communication style, are we approaching them in the communication style they prefer that they understand that they want to be communicated in. Messaging, are we targeting our messaging to them? Are we even speaking to them at all? And then of course there's both the digital and the physical experience. And I can easily just go on and on, just like I'm sure you can too, to talk about the data models, behavioral science, all these other things around technology and data analytics. But first, Let's get back to the basics. Trust. What we found is, do we even have the trust of this target audience? The answer might be no. And why? Because communication, are we even talking to them? Are we even targeting them in our marketing messages, in our pitches, in our acquisition? But then how do you even do that? Even if you are talking to them, are we building empathy with them? Communicating with them, building empathy, showing them empathy, helps us to gain their trust. Why is trust so important? Trust is important so that we can gain a piece or a share of their lifestyle. Why is that important? So that we can gain a piece or a share of their mind. Why is that important? So we can get their wallet share. Now weaving all of this in with data models, and building out next best scenarios can fit in once trust is earned. And then I'll gear more back towards the topic at hand, data analytics. So how do you possibly incorporate all of this into experience? First, ensure that we have robust preferences for these customers so that they feel that they are giving us this information. Nothing creeps out a customer more than us essentially telling them we have information on you that you didn't give to us and we're using it. That will definitely lose all trust. So using the preferences that they give to us, make sure that it's easy peasy. Uh, and then combining that with data analytics or buzzword from yesteryear, IOT or big data, trying to mix all of that together creating goals in the entire experience. Because if you think about it, just a basic human nature, everything that you do or you want to do or you try to do or you strive to do, it all relates back to goals. For example, get up on a work day, what's your first goal? Get ready for work, get to work on time. What's the next goal? Possibly getting through all your meetings, getting through the day, getting through your checklist, those are all goals. So at the end of the day, it's all around goal-based. Now, what makes goals so important from the business perspective and data analytics? It helps you to start to weave in gamification. 
and the gamification helps you to continue to validate your data, your analytics, your models that you've created. But it also gets people to form habits around your brand, around the experience, around whatever it is that you want them to do, helps you to influence behavior. And what does that do? It also builds engagement and loyalty. And that comes with dollars at the end of the day. It also helps to enhance the experience. So enhance, enhances the experience, helps people to form habits, hopefully in a positive way, and bringing dollars. Seems like a win-win. So in terms of accelerating growth, what you can do is start to incorporate these five different factors. And then once you incorporate these five different factors, it helps to start to weave in the various new types of data that are out there, as well as making it human through your communication, through your empathy, through your trust, the trust that you build, as long as it's all genuine. And then continuing to prove out the data analytics, continuing to prove out the call to action that you prefer for these clients to take, as well as to ensure that you are continuing to build your life share, your mind share, and the wallet share. And now to also do this is to ensure that you're in the right channels that these cons target consumers are in. For example, Instagram or Insta, it's so yesterday. Now it's all about Clubhouse. How many financial brands do you see have channels in Clubhouse? Within the first few weeks of launching, I remember seeing Bloomberg, several channels for Bloomberg. Did I see any banks? Did I see any insurance companies? It helps to show that an organization is human and close and accessible through these channels for these new generations or these younger generations. And then of course, tailoring or altering or shifting your communication style so that people understand. What does that mean? Does it mean speak their language? Of course, what, what, what it also means is, for example, different people, or for example, in our research community, different personas, different groups of people, they receive information in different manners. Some receive information better when they see tons and tons of text when you give them a Bible size uh, type of information, while others, they receive information with more numbers, number-based evidence. And then other personas prefer more images or pictures or infographics. And then others might really rely heavily or respond better to charts. This can also bring in equality, by the way. Then the other pieces around both the digital and the physical experience and making sure that using the data and the analytics to seamlessly move between each of those different spaces all in a circular type of uh, cycle. So easy for me to say. But what's also really important is to try and figure out how do you continue to have this easy button, if you will. That might be pre-populate, that might be, oh, we just know, we know you just came and spoke with us in our physical uh, space and you talked about these things. Are you calling up or are you trying to interact with us on the mobile app in the same way? So it's that seamless experience. Again, easier for me to say than to actually do, but it's something to strive for. It's one of the many North Stars to strive for. So again, uh, it is really important to build that trust genuinely. That can be through communication and earning it through empathy and then gain, gaining that trust. Again, it's important for lifestyle share, mind share, wallet share. All of this may not necessarily be concrete numbers, but they are data points. And these data points help you to shift. And these data points help you to shift into action. So in my research with my team, what we found was that personalization, there's many different levels. And you can get to those levels and you can activate each of those levels through data. 
and you can weave it into experience. So the first level is passive. This one is pretty much just general. There's no segmentation. It's to every single general population. An example would be when you go to Starbucks or when you go to a coffee shop and you order, order your coffee or your tea. They customize it based on your own personal preferences. But it's not because you're someone special. Sorry to say. Um, but it's just because you are one unique individual customer who has those specific preferences for your beverage. The next level is personal. This one, the segmentation is based on some simple categories using some basic data. For example, preferences. Moving on, pleasant. Treating customers by knowing them as an individual, making them feel special, making them feel like they're a special snowflake, if you will, or a unique flow snowflake, as opposed to a customer known as a number. So for example, wishing you a happy birthday. Moving on to productive. This is around client segmentation based on profile and life stage. And it's focused on deep conversation and provide recommendations based on preset rules and guidance. This is where you could experiment with next best action or next best scenario. And the last one is around predictive. This is when you have a very deep understanding of your client's behaviors, their preferences, and providing them with relevant contextual and valuable uh, insights or offers or advice. So I hope you learned some very interesting insights just as we have. And if you have any questions or any comments, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. I hope that you stay healthy and safe. Enjoy the rest of the conference.